There were actually two studies that came out in 2015. One, the one in JAMA Internal Medicine was the one done in Korea, and the other one was a study in Canada. Both are very large database studies, and both show that there is a significant amount of increased risk of aneurysm or dissection during the time period that patients are taking fluoroquinolones. However, that said, both are observational or database or cohort studies. They can't prove causation. Now, what was interesting about the Canadian study is they actually tried to, they did a test. They had a, a cohort of patients that got no antibiotics. They had a cohort of patients that got amoxicillin as their test and a cohort of patients that got fluoroquinolones. The risk of aneurysm in the amoxicillin group was actually 1.5 times higher than the no antibiotics group. And then the risk of aneurysm in the fluoroquinolone group was about 2.4 times higher than the no antibiotic group. But the fact that their quote negative tracer, which was amoxicillin, showed an increased risk of aneurysm when we really don't postulate a mechanism shows that there is some confounding in that study that's not subtracted out by all the adjustments made. In other words, there probably is some increase related to the quinolones, but since there was also some increase related to their negative control, which was the amoxicillin group, in addition to the patients that got no antibiotic group, sicker patients are getting antibiotics, and sicker patients also get aneurysms. It's entirely possible there is a very real association, but we need to find the biologic causation behind it. And I should say, there's a new study that came out in 2018 and published in British Medical Journal that looked in the Swedish, a large Swedish database, and they actually compared uh, everyone on amoxicillin to everyone on fluoroquinolones and also found an increased risk of aneurysm in patients on quinolones. I work on antibiotic stewardship for asymptomatic bacteria, and I work on antibiotic stewardship for urinary tract infection. Although it is not a first-line antibiotic for UTI, Fluoroquinolones are the most commonly prescribed antibiotic agent for urinary tract infection. This is despite the fact that guidelines don't make them a first choice drug and that there's a black box warning against using fluoroquinolones in uncomplicated UTI. So I've been working on multiple projects to improve antibiotic stewardship in outpatient settings, which is basically telling people, please don't use fluoroquinolones as your first choice. And then along come these three studies that say, hey, fluoroquinolones may be related to aneurysms getting worse. Add to that that I work part of my time in Department of Surgery on a direct clinical research in the Department of Surgery at Baylor, and our vice chair for research is an aortic surgeon. So in his lab, he found that mice who were predisposed to getting aneurysms, if you gave them fluoroquinolones, they actually got aneurysms that ruptured compared to the mice that didn't get the fluoroquinolones. And so he said to me, Barbara, do aneurysm patients get fluoroquinolones? And I said, oh, sure, it's one of our most commonly used antibiotics. I'm sure aneurysm patients are getting fluoroquinolones. He said, well, how many are getting fluoroquinolones? I said, well, I don't know. Let me get you an answer for that. And so that's how we did the study that we're presenting today at Shea. We asked the question simply, are aneurysm patients getting exposed to fluoroquinolones? Because if it turns out there is a real relationship between quinolones and aneurysm, it's in the first group of patients that should not be getting fluoroquinolones are those with aneurysms. So we looked at a database of 22 million inpatient hospitalizations. It's 400 hospitals across the United States. And we sorted out all patients in that group with aneurysms. So that was a cohort we wanted to look at, was aneurysm patients. We also got a second, although it's a smaller cohort, of patients with Marfan syndrome because that predisposes them to aortic aneurysm. So out of all aneurysm patients, we looked at all of their hospitalizations. It's an inpatient database and found that 25 or 20 percent of their hospitalizations, one in five, they get fluoroquinolones. So that's really the punchline, you know. Aneurysm patients, yes indeed, they are getting uh, fluoroquinolones, and if you want to know the rate, well, inpatient, it's one in five hospitalizations. Now we're missing the outpatient data, it's not in the database, which probably is even higher on that. And it really didn't make much difference if they were a dissection patient or before the repair, after the repair of the aneurysm. All these patients with aneurysms are getting quinolones. So then I said, well, if you're an aneurysm patient, what puts you at risk for getting fluoroquinolones? And not surprisingly, if you have a UTI or pneumonia in your diagnosis, that puts you at a, you know, your odds of getting fluoroquinolones are much higher. So the bottom line is, if it turns out there is an association that's real between fluoroquinolone use and aneurysm development or worsening, 
the aneurysm patients that are most at risk are going to be those that have pneumonia or UTI. So it become part of your stewardship program. You admit someone for pneumonia, you need to think, wait, do they have an aneurysm before I put them on a fluoroquinolone? And the same with UTI. I'm going to treat someone for UTI, but wait, could they have an aneurysm? Are they at risk for an aneurysm before I put them on a fluoroquinolone?